You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my dear listeners. May God bless all of you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, we began to meditate. In fact, we learned to meditate upon God's Word. And I would like, I would like you, and I want, I want to continue. But I want you to pay attention because sometimes a psalm is read in a simple way and we do not go deep, we do not seek in God's Word what is really happening and what is really going on in our life. For example, Psalm 43, which you may have your Bible open already, Psalm 43 teaches us, it teaches us the problems that we face nowadays, the problems that, whether it is of God or not, we come through, we face in this life. And it says like this, Psalm 43, the psalmist says, Vindicate me, O God. In other words, he is saying, Judge my case, Lord. So the psalmist, he is afflicted, he is desperate, because he is surrounded by the enemies, by problems that he he is facing. And this is what happens to us, especially when we find ourselves with no way out. There is no one whom we can ask for help. There is no one that we can count on. You can count on money or your friends or loved ones. When you find yourself in a, in, in a, in a no way out, the only thing you can remember is to look up to God and seeking Him for help. I have been saying that the best place for a person to have an encounter with God is when they are at the bottom pit, because there, at the bottom pit, there is no one. They count with nobody, and there is no other choice, there is no other alternative besides calling out upon God. And this is the case of the psalmist. He says, vindicate me, O God, and it's like saying, God, I, I plead to you, I call upon you, because my, my case is against an ungodly nation. Against an ungodly nation, for the nation was against him. And then he cries out by saying, Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, an, a corrupt man, a cruel man. So this psalmist, he is showing and calling upon God's justice because he finds himself in injustice and there is no one that he can count on. So this is the first verse when you find yourself across a situation where there is no way for you to get out of it. There is only God. You have to use your faith. But you have to use faith with intelligence, because it says here what it is to use your faith with intelligence. Because on the, set, on the following verse, verse 2 says, For you are the God of my strength. So now he was assured that God would set him free to protect him with the strength that God has upon the altar. He was going to defend him. God was going to do the miracle where the devil cannot touch. So he, the psalmist, had this faith. But then, on the other hand, he questions by saying, Why do you cast me off? So for one side, he is saying that the God is his strength, the God of his strength, how come he is also manifesting doubt by saying, Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? 
and then you have to notice this is very important to notice this 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 verse is deep because this conflict as the psalmist is praying it shows two kinds of voices two voices that are opposite one another the voice of faith the intelligent faith the faith of reasoning that charges God's justice saying you are the God of my strength so that is intelligent so he was assured that God was the God of the strength but on the other hand there was a voice of doubt but Bishop how come the voice of doubt how come the voice of doubt and faith work when you are talking to God how many times comes those thoughts those negative thoughts how many times you are seeking the Holy Spirit for instance and you are there praising God you are my God you are my Savior and then comes those thoughts but you don't deserve did you, do you remember what you did yesterday do you remember the filth you did you lied you committed adultery you committed prostitution you used the drugs you did what was not supposed to be done so at the same time as you are praying to God come those voices of doubt, of fear, of oppression, to try to try to impede that your prayer reaches God. But it comes, it goes to God, it reaches God. The psalmist says, why do you cast me off? God did not cast him away. God did not cast him out. No. If God had rejected him, he would not continue the prayer, right? God was hearing his prayer. But the heart, his heart, his heart, and you know the heart is a fountain of emotions. The heart is a fountain of emotions, feelings. The heart feels and tries to make us to have actions against faith. That's the heart. And we carry the heart 24-7. We cannot get rid of our heart. But when this heart is surrendered on the altar, 100% on the altar, so then God, He changes this heart. He makes this heart to have a heart of flesh. He gives us a new heart to know how to choose, to make the right choice. When we, when we make this campaign to go on the altar and to put all on the altar, do you remember that word that Jesus said? Jesus once said, look at what Jesus once said, where they are, where your heart is, there is your treasure. Meaning where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So there is where your heart is as well. Because where your treasure is, there will also be your heart. I believe that you may understand it like this. If your heart is in your son, so then your son is your treasure. If your treasure is your son, or your daughter, or your children, so then your heart is in, is in your children. So, where your treasure is, there is where your heart is. Where your heart is, there is where your treasure is. So, if your heart is in your, in your life, or something that you have of value, or your future, your projects, personal projects. So then, there is where your treasure is. And the fact is, my dear listener, that when we place this treasure on the altar, when we surrender, or when we place our heart on the altar of God, when we depend on Him alone, then He gives us a new heart. And then, this new heart cannot threaten us 
our heart cannot impede our prayer of faith to be done. So, you see how we can learn with this, with this Psalm 43. Because he says, For you are the God of my strength. For you are the God of my strength, meaning my Savior. And then right after he says, Why do you cast me off? But the heart here, the heart of the psalmist, was trying to tell him, was actually trying to point him out, was trying to, to bring lies to his mind. But he, he, he answered. He answered, he questioned by saying, why do I go mourning? Another, another question he made, because he thought, he thought, that he thought, he thought that God had left him, and now he was lamenting, he was mourning the oppression of the enemy. So, this cannot be done. We cannot allow our hearts to speak, because our intelligent faith, the faith that thinks, the biblical faith, does not give attention to these voices or the voices of the heart. You see that the songs, there are music, for instance, in the world that talks about I need to hear the voice of the heart, follow the, the voice of the heart, soap opera. Everything speaks about voice of the heart, right? And it's the voice of the heart that has been leading the world into hell. It is the voice of the heart that makes people to kill themselves. It is the voice of the heart that makes people to cheer for Brazil instead of cheering on for themselves. So the voice of the heart makes a person to fight for what is wrong. The voice of the heart makes a person not to go ahead. So, my dear listener, use your intelligence, use your faith with intelligence. Look at what is written on God's word and begin to apply it in your life. And now the question is, in the conflict between faith, the intelligent faith, the rational faith, the biblical faith, and the voice of the heart, which one, which one of it wins? wins the one that you give ears to. It will win the one that you give ears to if you hear more the heart of your of the voice of your heart, then faith loses. Now, if you give ears and attention and devotion to the voice of faith, and the voice of, of faith is what is written on God's word. Doesn't matter, disregard of the circumstances, disregard of the problem, is what Jesus did when he resisted the devil by saying, it is written, and that's it. The devil could not surpass what was written. No one can remove what was written. And when a person has this intelligent faith, they are able to stand firm upon God's word. And this is what you must learn. And this is what you have to use every day, every moment, every second. Because this conflict, this conflict of mind and body, mind and heart, is constant. And the one who wins are the ones who put the word of God to play. We are going to continue talking more about this verse of Psalm 43, because we are going to have more things to talk. Let us go on with the program, and in a few we are going to be coming back. Shepherd 
My life before I joined the Universal Church was very empty. When my parents got divorced as I was a young child, uh, that really affected me. I didn't know how to cope with that or um, to vent to anybody. Um, hold on. <laughs> um, my mom would uh, get in a lot of fights with my dad when I was a little girl. And um, I witnessed a lot of what would happen in the house. My mom would hit my dad. And my dad would sit in a chair and deny that he didn't do anything wrong when we knew what he was doing was wrong. And he would cheat and spend the money that he shouldn't have been spending for the family. And um, I was really little. I don't remember how old. But that's what I remember. Um, my dad coming home late and uh, my mom pulling him aside and talking to him in the room and closing the door. But I would listen to everything through the wall. And I'd hear my mom crying and uh, upset. My mom asked for a divorce, but my dad left the house. And uh, the house went under foreclosure and we had to move. My mom had to carry everything and she was so concerned about what was going on with her and my father that she didn't really give me the love that I needed to let me know that it was gonna be okay. I just grew up with that resentment towards both of my parents and the confusion. 
and I didn't really know how to handle that. I had a best friend who I'd always hang out with. I would leave my house to go be with her to escape my problems at home. And that's when it all began. And I started using drugs with her and we became really close. And I hated being home because I knew at home I had to deal with what was actually going on. I would come home high and very aggressive and violent. And everything my mom said would upset me and irritate me. And there was no love or communication. So my mom and I would start to argue and then progressively we'd start to fight. My mom had anger issues too, so my mom would react in hitting me. So we had a lot of problems at home. The problems inside of me were building up. Well, I had a child at 17, living at home with my mom and things still aren't okay. I still haven't been able to express all this time what's been going on with me. And um, she kicked me and my daughter out. Uh, grandma was the only person that was uh, willing to take me and my daughter in and help me. So she suggested that I come stay with her. When I came down to grandma, she took care of me like if I was her own daughter. And um, that's when she told me that I needed to go to church and that my life needed to change. I went on a Friday, so that's a great day to go. <laughs> I was getting attacked and I didn't know it. Spiritually, my grandma's telling me it's going to be okay to just relax and try to listen to the message. I continued to go to the Universal Church in Corona when the pastor took me aside and talked to me. He knew I had issues, but he took the time to uh, ask me what's going on and to pray for me. I felt like I just gave everything to God, and that's when I slowly started to change and I was able to leave everything there at the altar, at the cross. As I was speaking and telling him all my issues, I felt uh, sad, really hurt inside because I wasn't able to open up to anybody, but with him I felt comfortable and I trusted him. But towards the end after prayer, I felt different, happy, like I let everything go and that I had peace again and that God was gonna help me change things for my life. I started to change the way I lived my life and who I was and the things I chose. And I have uh, some downtime being sober and clean, so I'm really proud of myself. I spend a lot of quality time with my kids. We work out all together, so we go to the park, we'll go to the movies, we'll have lunch. My mom's my best friend now, and uh, we get along great. We go to church together every day. <laughs> Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life.
Jesus came with a message that would change the way we live. He showed us all by example what the heart of heaven is. He saw our need and he heard our cry. Loved us so much that he gave his life. He taught us by his sacrifice how we should live our lives. I was very rebellious. I suffered uh, abuse, having boyfriends, um, stealing. My life before I came to the Universal Church was very hard, very depressing. I saw my mom the morning, and then she's like, you're not gonna see me for a long time and my life changed drastically. I suffered abuse from uh, some of my family members, especially, you know, sexual abuse. I was very rebellious, staying out late, having boyfriends, stealing. I was 16, so it was funny, I was at work, and um, my mom just walked into the store where I worked, I was so happy because she never told me that she was going to come back for us. The moment had finally came for us to reunite. However, my happiness was short-lived um, because my parents eventually decided that after 25 plus years that they, you know, no longer wanted to be a family again. Uh, at one point, I started hanging out with someone. I met him maybe at a party. Um, I did not know that he was a drug dealer. You know, we went to the clubs one night, was having a good time. He got into an altercation with someone. And on our way home, that person followed us and opened fire in our car. And I got shot in my arm, my right arm. And as I was walking aimlessly, I had no destination. You know, I just walked past the church. A pastor was outside, you know, he spoke with me. You know, invited me to an event they were having that Friday night, it was a Friday. I was so desperate, so, so desperate. And, you know, I went. And here I was a couple seconds before thinking about taking my own life. 
It's as if like God just sent him right there at that moment to save me. I could see my life gradually changing from every time I would, you know, attend the church. The relationship with my mom, my dad, um, I actually started, forgave them for leaving me behind. I started valuing myself more. I started not really having the urge to have more than one boyfriend. Um, right now, in this present moment, I feel great. I feel free. I feel revived. My life will only get better. I'm happy. Like, I'm so happy. I feel free. And I have the love of God. Everyone who does not submit to God's word brings to themselves destruction to their life. Even though they have faith, goals, and dreams, if there is no obedience to God's word, they will certainly be rejected by God. God sees the heart and recognizes those who fear him and keep their word. And these are the ones who want eternal life, are humbling themselves, repents from their wicked ways, and seek the throne of grace and mercy of God. The Universal Church, empowering lives with the Word of God.
was adopted and I didn't understand my adoptive parents. I didn't understand where they were coming from. You know, I wanted to know who my real mom is and what she did and who she was. And my parents always told me that she wasn't a good person. You don't need to be around her. So I started to rebel. I was um, hanging out in the streets, hanging out with wrong friends, you know, smoking. I found my real mom and I ended up living with her. And to find out it wasn't the way I needed to be. And it was other, there was other times where she did pull me into certain other lifestyle with drug dealers and stuff like that. Three years ago, she had introduced me to this guy and said, you know, if you need your phone bill paid, if you need, you want a real man, this is a man that could take care of you. He was no good. She only did that for him to be around so she can get her crack. And one time, one of her friends ratted her out. And one night, I just came home from work and I come in the house and I just changed my clothes and there's a whole bunch of police in the house. So everybody had to go to jail. I just started to break down and cry. I was like, why, why did I do this to myself? Why, why did I get myself in this place? Why did I have to go so hard to go nowhere, you know? I couldn't change the situation because that person didn't want it to change. It was, it was devastating. So I read the paper and it was like, do you feel like you have bad luck, depression, bad spirits? And I was like, wow. Okay, maybe I'll go on a Friday to the church. I don't like how my life is going. I feel very depressed. So I'll give it a try. I, I definitely saw the change in me. And I saw where I was and where I could be. You don't, you don't have to choose the negative life. You don't have to choose smoking. You don't have to party. You don't have to drink to feel good, to feel happy, to think that you're gonna overcome your depression, your anxiety, whatever you go through, that's not the way. Walking through the doors of University Church gave me a way to build my faith. You know, use what God gave us to use, you know? There is a God out there. There's a God, and He's loving, He's caring, and He's here to change your life, help you be the person that you are designed and to be. A follower waits for bread and fish. A disciple is a fisherman. A follower fights for growth. A disciple fights to reproduce. A follower surrenders part of their goods. A disciple gives up all their life. A follower loves freedom. A disciple enjoys serving and sacrifice. A follower is worth because they add. A disciple because they multiply. A follower is conditioned by circumstances. A disciple uses it to exercise their faith. A follower is valuable. A disciple is indispensable. Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. I had a lot of hate inside of me towards my my mom. So I felt rejected. I felt like she didn't love me. I just always felt like if I was alone, I had a little brother at that time, which I always felt like if I was his mom, I was always taking care of him. Just a lot of situations in the house that I don't feel that I shouldn't have had to been placed in. I was very rebellious. I started drinking at a very young age. Just trying to to feel that emptiness. When I left my house at 16, I had met uh, my kid's father. We ended up living together. He was a gang member and it was a different kind of suffering. He was unfaithful to me. He was involved in selling drugs. He was murdered and he died in my arms. That was the beginning of another suffering. Because of all of that, we ended up uh, being homeless. So. Me and the kids ended up living in the car. I didn't want to live. I was thinking about committing suicide because I didn't know how to be a mother and a father. You know, my son caught me in the bathroom with the pills in my hand. That was, I think, the hardest, you know. And that is where I said, this is, this is it. I felt the difference when I left that first Friday. I started seeing things falling into place. You know, of course things come and go, problems, but it's you handle them in a different way. Where there was hopelessness before, there was hope. 
they teach you how to use your faith. They teach you how to to put it into practice, how to see results, you know, and get those fruits, see those fruits from your faith. An intelligent faith. All the curses are turned into blessings. Son, that gift will change. 